Coburn, we will be watching your race. Thank you. Next on C-SPAN, we're live at the National Press Club, where a new poll recently conducted to measure Americans' attitudes towards Muslims is being released this morning. We'll hear from representatives of the Council on American-Islamic Relations who will talk about the survey's findings. Live coverage just getting underway. Every act of violence in the name of Islam. We have launched a petition on our website, not in the name of Islam, where about 700,000 people signed the petition saying that the acts of the few should not be generalized over the majority of Muslims. 99.9% .9 or even more of the Muslims are peaceful people. Islam is a peaceful religion, and we cannot allow hate, violence, and bigotry and racism to divide our country. We wanted to make sure that the American people understand and they know Islam what it stands for. Therefore, we're calling on the president, we're calling on the presidential candidate, all of them to stand up and speak out about violence, about hate crime, about bigotry, about racism, about all these sentiments that is being you know, harbored or people believe in their you know, society and so on about Muslims and Islam. I would like to thank two people who really done a wonderful work on this research. I want to acknowledge Jali Bisharat. She's really done a lot of work on this research, and I want to acknowledge also Jenny Salsh, who you will hear from her later on. They are the ones who really did most of the work on this research. We wanted to have a scientific way of measuring out and, and, and what happened throughout you know, the society so we can repeat this every year and we can measure whether there's a progress or a, a decay or a backward steps into these sentiments against Muslims and Islam in this country. This is the first time that CARE have done this, and we hope that we will repeat this again. With this, I thank you for coming, and I will uh, turn it to Ibrahim. Thank you. And the, uh, the results of the survey will be in a PowerPoint presentation that's downloadable from our website later today uh, at care-net.org, C-A-I-R-N-E-T.org. Uh, next, we'll have uh, CARE Executive Director Nihad Awad. Thank you, Ibrahim. Good morning. We knew that there is discrimination. We knew that there are hate crimes against Muslims. And we knew that there is hate speech on the rise against Muslims and Islam in the society, especially after 9-11. But we did not know that it was that deep. That's why this finding um, are very disturbing for us. It is unfair to demonize an entire faith of one billion people and the faith of six to seven million American Muslims. I think we all share responsibilities as Muslims and as Americans. We urge legislatures to consider the findings of this uh, research as they debate legislations on hate crimes, on hate speech, and to make sure that American Muslims are included. And the Islamic faith is also included in these legislations. We also call on civic and religious leaders to reflect upon the findings that we are presenting today. We've noticed increased anti-Muslim hate speech from the pulpits of some religious platforms. And we would like to remind them that we're all in the same boat. And we all have to exist and we have to work and think about the future and the future for our children. We don't want stereotypes to govern the way we look at each other. In a way, we are fortunate there are 7 million American Muslims in this country and growing. And the, with that, there should be a growing understanding of the Islamic faith. Islam is in the United States, and the Islamic faith is practiced by millions of people. There should be no reason for ignorance, and there should be no reason for people to hold and harbor anti-Muslim feelings based on ignorance, as we will see from the results. We as an organization also have to do our part. We have been doing some of it, not all of it. As uh, Omar mentioned, we have the Not in the Name of Islam petition online 
It's been signed almost by 700,000 organizations and individuals. We urge people to go to the website of CARE, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, but Muslims in particular. Go to care-net.org and sign and express your feelings and make sure that the majority of Muslims clear the name of Islam um, out of these um, reckless behavior and speech by some Muslims here and around the world. As Omar said, contrary to the prevailing notion by some people that Muslims have not done enough to condemn 9-11, we condemned 9-11. We condemn every major terrorist attack that took place. Probably some people are calling us the organization that always condemns terrorism. We communicate with the media. We send news releases. We have a daily digest. Our positions are known. They're not secret. And the majority of Muslim Americans and their organizations have done so. Maybe the media did not communicate this message to the wider audience. Maybe we did not reach to all these people, but we would like to assure our fellow Americans, that we are doing our best. Can we do more? Absolutely. We can do more and we should do more. And that's why, based on this finding, we will do our best. We're urging the Muslim community during the month of Ramadan to have a day of sharing, to share food, to reach out to their neighbors. But also we're asking the neighbors of Muslims to reach out to Muslims and find out the beauty of this faith and the beauty of this community. Thank you. Next, we'll hear more about the actual findings of the report and the methodology used in the polling uh, from Jenny Saul with Genesis Research Associates based in California. Hello. Um, when CARE came to us, they explained to us that they had been facing this rising tide of hate and hate crimes, hate speech, and they wanted to understand what Americans thought about Muslims and Islam in America. And so we developed a survey that would help us understand what, what Americans think, help us identify any variables that are correlated with hateful thoughts and prejudice, and also give us some ideas about what might help to overcome and combat these thoughts. So what we did was we did a survey, a telephone survey of a thousand households. We spoke to 500 men and 500 women. It was a random digit sample, so it's a random sample of American population um, within the continental United States. Uh, it took place between June 23rd and July 2nd of this year. And on that basis, we have an error range of plus or minus three points. What we found was that top of mind negative imagery associated with the term Muslim or the thought of Muslims was 16 times more prevalent than favorable imagery. That is, when we asked people, when I say the word Muslim, what do you think of? They were 16 times more likely to give us some kind of a negative statement um, on that basis than a positive one. About one in four Americans told us that Muslims teach their children to hate. They told us that Muslims value life less than other people, that, um, that, um, that, that Muslims are, are seeking to change the American way of life. And those with the most negative attitudes about Muslims tended to be male, white, less educated, that is a high school education or less, politically conservative, registered Republicans. Um, we also found that most people have little knowledge of Islam and that they don't really know any Muslims or they don't know that they know Muslims. But when they do, when they have friends or colleagues who are Muslim and they're aware of that, we found that they had more enlightened, more favorable attitudes. Um, when we said, as I told you, uh, when we asked people what comes to mind when we say the word Muslim, 32% of Americans gave us negative imagery, war, hatred, violence, terrorists, enemies, Osama bin Laden, um, 
hateful descriptions, um, oppressed women. Uh, and by the way, um, we only had 1% who said that they thought of oppressed women when they thought of Muslims. But when we asked people whether or not they agreed with the statement that uh, the Islam, Islamic faith encourages the oppression of women, 51% of Americans agreed with that statement. Um, we also read a series of statements, both positive statements and negative statements, and asked people whether they agreed or disagreed. And we found that 26%, 27%, 29%, around the 25 to 30% range, agreed with statements such as the Muslim religion teaches violence and hatred, Muslims value life less than other people, Muslims want to change the American way of life, and Muslims teach their children to hate un unbelievers. And as I said, we also had 51% who agreed that uh, the, the Islamic faith encourages the oppression of women. Um, on the other hand, we, we had some findings that were, that were encouraging. Uh, when we asked people whether they agreed or disagreed with the statement that the people who are using Islam to justify violence are misusing the, treat, the teachings, we found that 44% agreed strongly with that statement. And in fact, most Americans did agree at least at some to some degree with that statement. And about half of the American population holds one or more favorable attitudes about Muslims in terms of their family-oriented values, um, disbelieving that they are dishonest, um, believing that they're hospitable, and that they've contributed to civilization. Now, we found that those who feel knowledgeable about Islam, those who have some degree of knowledge, tended to have more favorable attitudes about uh, Muslims and Islam than did uh, people who felt that they didn't know anything about it at all. And um, they tended to have learned about Islam from books. Um, and it's hard to know what, what specific books they read and, and what sort of knowledge uh, they actually have, but, but feeling knowledgeable tended to be associated with more favorable attitudes, um, as did personal relationships with Muslims. And as you can see on that chart, uh, where the lighter bars represent the people who did know Muslims, they had either friends or colleagues who were Muslim, they had dramatically more favorable uh, attitudes than did the people who knew nothing or knew no one. And finally, we found that African Americans, who themselves have been subjected to some of the prejudice um, that Muslims are, are experiencing, tend to have more favorable attitudes than do white Americans. OK? Thank you very much. And you'll be able to ask uh, some questions about the further uh, findings, because there's more results that we haven't had here. But again, we'll have it online on our website later today. And uh, a few words from our own research director, uh, Dr. Mohammed Nimmer. Um, good morning. I would just first like to thank Jale and uh, Jenny for, uh, for a wonderful job and a very professional uh, work they have done uh, for CARE. American uh, Muslims have had uh, almost a century of an uninterrupted communal presence in this country. Uh, Muslims are not a, uh, a new group of foreigners uh, who just arrived at the shore of the United States. The roots of Muslims run deeper than that. But we have existed as a community uh, at least since 1925 and never ceased to exist uh, since then. Because at the time of slavery, there were Muslims. They tried to establish some communal presence. That was interrupted. But since 1925, uh, there has been uh, Islamic centers. And ever since, uh, more and more types of Islamic organizations have come to existence. And the uh, mainstream of, of, of the Muslim community is uh, uh, committed uh, to living as uh, part of this society, but they're also committed to uh, not just to the responsibilities uh, that they uh, 
that they uh, have to meet under uh, under the Constitution of the United States and uh, the n norms of being good citizens, but also uh, to live as equal citizens uh, with full protection and equal protection under the law. It is very alarming and it's very, uh, very uncomfortable to uh, be living in a neighborhood when you uh, just think about how Muslims are going to uh, feel about this, uh, the findings of the survey. Uh, it's very uncomfortable to live thinking that it is, uh, it is likely that one in four of the neighbors around you uh, think that you are less human than they are. Uh, it, uh, it is not very uncomfortable to live this way. And uh, th that is the alarm. The hope is that when people are prompted, when they're asked, meaning when there is an opportunity for dialogue, people are more likely to think in positive sense than in negative sense, which means that there is a great room for education, there's great room uh, for dialogue. And I'll just leave it there. Now we'd take any uh, questions that anyone might have uh, about the results. Yes, I have a question for Ms. Solms. Uh, I'm a little confused as to, on the one hand, you say there are negative images, then you, there, you have this chart with favorable attitudes. So uh, what's going on here? Well, I think people hold both positive and negative attitudes about many things. Um, and when you say that 25% of the people hold negative attitudes and 45% hold favorable attitudes, they can, that, that can coexist in terms, e even on the same issue. Okay, and also, could you explain a little bit more the 16%, I'm not, I'm not how are you getting that? The, the, 32, the 16 times? Yeah, 16 what, times. What we did was we opened the survey. The first question we asked was, when I say the word Muslim, what do you think of? There was nothing, no, no other guidance than that. And 32% of the people gave us negative comments. And we were, we were very conservative in our coding of these comments so that anything that was neutral, we, we set off aside as neutral. But 32% of the people that we spoke to said something distinctly negative when we asked them that question, and only 2% said something distinctly positive in That's response. That's 16 times more. That's 16 okay. times more. Okay. I have a question to Dr. Awad, please. Let's say the poll is done again next year, the same poll, and the situation in Iraq is calmer. You think the results would be more positive? Well, we hope that the results will be positive even next month, not next year. Um, and this is uh, the first uh, time we do the survey, and we hope to do it on an annual basis to um, uh, monitor the change. And that's why we're, we're going to do our best as a community, and we're asking other people in the society also to do their best to remove ignorance and build dialogue and provide information. Um, in addition, Ignorance only, or let's say political. We cannot, we cannot ignore the fact that conflicts abroad influence the opinions and imagery and the perception that people have uh, towards other people. Um, so we cannot deny the fact that after 9-11 and during the war, the anti-Muslim feelings uh, are on, uh, become on, on the rise. And uh, we, as a civil rights organization, we, we receive most of the complaints of discrimination and hate crimes during times of conflict. And we hope that we'll, we'll step away from conflict, conflict into peaceful coexistence. And to remove that, I think we have to do our best as a community, as organizations. And we're asking lawmakers, educators, civic and religious leaders to also do their part. Uh, just to miss. I, I think one of the uh, best findings from the report is that uh, when people get to know Muslims, their prejudices go down, and when they learn about Islam, their prejudice and their bias goes down. So it, we as American Muslims can do our part in terms of reaching out uh, to people of other faiths and uh, educating them about Islam. We've done 
our, uh, uh, as we say, are not in the name of uh, Islam uh, petition drive. We have our library project, uh, putting library books about Islam in every public library in America. We've uh, achieved uh, half of our goals so far. Uh, we've done our national ad campaign, and we've done many other projects to reach out to people of other faiths in the society, to educate them, and to have them interact with Muslims. And as we say during Ramadan, we're encouraging uh, Muslim communities nationwide to have open houses for people of other faiths in their local communities. Did you? Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering uh, about the what comes to mind. That question basically asks people what you think of when the word Muslim or Islam comes up. If, I mean, you say 30, 32% have negative images, but does that mean that people believe these images or is it the first thing that comes to mind? Do you, do you, I mean, why is that an indicator necessarily that they have negative attitudes towards people? It, it doesn't necessarily mean that I believe it just because it's the first thing that I associate it with. Well, generally it's considered that what you have at the top of your mind, what you will say on an open-ended basis, is the most predictive of, what, of the way that you think. So if I say what comes to mind when, when I say the word Muslim and you say war, you probably don't have warm, fuzzy feelings about Islam, just in general. I mean, that would be a um, top of mind awareness, top of mind thought is, is, is read as the best predictor of people's attitudes. But for example, I might be somebody who got the survey and you called me up and I'm watching TV on Iraq and somebody's beheading somebody and they say he's a Muslim, I automatically will say that even though, for example, I come from that background, it doesn't necessarily make me somebody who believes that Islam is negative. We also do have that 25 to 29 percent were in agreement with the statements, the negative statements that we had about Islam, um, with even f more than that uh, in agreement about the oppression of women. Um, your study finds that it's mostly registered or more registered Republicans tend to um, have negative images about Muslims. Do you find that in the upcoming election, more people in the Muslim community are feeling more accepted by the Democratic, <laughs> sorry, by the Democratic candidates if there is this conservative Republican anti-Muslim sentiment? Well, um, according to a survey that was released uh, also about two weeks ago about uh, the views of Muslims in the next uh, presidential election, about uh, 70% of Muslims, they favor Kerry over um, to compare to 7% and about 20% favor Nader for president. So that might be an indication. But that's because of the policies of the Bush administration and uh, the way it handled um, Muslims in this country and abroad in the past four years. So you don't think that that's related at all to maybe how the party itself and people that label themselves Republicans are acting towards the Muslim community? It, it might, it might be. I mean, the study shows that some registered voters who say they're Republican have, you know, negative uh, or harbor anti-Muslim sentiments. I want to make one point very clear. We don't believe, we're not, we're, we're saying these people are victims just like the Muslims are victims. We're all victims in this. I mean, imagine if someone stand up and beheading someone and he says this is in the name of Islam. As a Muslim, we're victims because we don't agree to it. We condemn it. It's not in our name. It's not in the name of our religion. And that deranged individual or, or criminal who've done it is really, you know, attacking us more than attacking anybody else by doing this act. The issue is living in a democratic society in America, being you know, a group of, of immigrants who came and made up this country, we have to understand each other and we have to work together to make sure that these things don't reflect in the majority of Muslims. You know, one individual does wrong. It doesn't mean that all the people who share the same faith and even if some of that individual claim to share the faith or, or they speak on the, on the behalf of Muslims without anybody even, even assign them to speak on our behalf. That is, so we, we've been affected double in every aspect of the way. We as Muslims in America, we've been affected twice by any terrorist attack. Number one, as Americans, as human beings, when we see someone is being killed unfairly, innocent people being killed all over the world by people who claim to be Muslims. At the same time, as Muslims, now it's been done in our name and we have to defend it and live with it the rest of our lives. And that's where we come in here and we're saying, we want to make sure that 
we live in a society, a free society, that can harbor good sentiment about people, and we don't want anybody to feel bad about anybody else. The, the, the issue is America must be a land of freedom and a land of unity for all people here. And I think uh, one point from our own polling, uh, we find that Muslims are not party line voters that they vote for candidates who address uh, the issues that they are concerned about. And we find uh, Muslims on all ends of the political spectrum in terms of conservative, liberal, and, and on different issues. They might be conservative on one issue, liberal on another issue. So uh, current events tend to drive uh, the uh, voting patterns in the Muslim community and uh, the candidates' positions, just like any other uh, election. Both candidates were sort of campaigning on national security and the war in Iraq, and especially President Bush. How is this affecting his constituency? Is mostly, you know, this is a base for him. He's 32 percent. Do you see that? Is there some kind of conflict there between what the way he's campaigning and what you're trying to do? Well, I, I don't think the president would want people who har harbor prejudicial or stereotypical views of Islam as his base. Uh, he's spoken many times uh, about Islam and not to associate Islam with violence. Uh, so I, I, I don't think we can correlate that figure with, with supporters of the president. Uh, but it, it is a disturbing figure that needs to be addressed by, uh, by all people, all opinion leaders, all elected officials, all uh, religious leaders. Uh, and we, we need to recognize it as a problem. Um, of those who responded negatively, do you have a breakdown in age? We did find that younger Americans tend to have more favorable attitudes than do older ones. Um, the over 45 population tends to be more negative. And did you ask or question further what or do you have any analysis why? I, I don't really have anything that that explains the reason why that would be. Um, do any of you ha uh, see differences with American Muslims as compared to American Christians, Jews, or even pagans when it comes to uh, reacting and responding to the crisis in the Sudan, uh, which the U.S. Congress and now the State Department has labeled genocide? Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously, uh, American Muslims are concerned about the situation in Sudan. We want to see an end to the killing, an end to the uh, displacement of civilian populations. Uh, after all, uh, all sides in that conflict are Muslim. Uh, and uh, we, our top priority is getting uh, uh, relief supplies through to those who are displaced and getting those who are displaced back home in time to raise crops and, and be back on their land. And uh, CARE has signed uh, the, uh, the uh, a statement uh, opposing what is going on in Darfur, uh, s signed by many other uh, religious uh, groups, uh, Christian and Jewish groups. And uh, we would join in uh, doing everything we can with other religious organizations uh, and communities to uh, resolve that situation. Last question in the back there. Yeah, uh, getting back to understanding that this is the first time you've taken this survey, right? Yeah. Is there any, any way to establish a baseline for um, how much this sentiment may have grown? Well, I think Anik. Yeah. Anecdotally, it's, it's clear that anti-Muslim rhetoric is growing by leaps and bounds in our society. And uh, just based on the rise in the number of reports of discrimination and bias and hate crimes that we receive, and uh, based on a number of other factors, uh, the hate mail even that we receive on a daily basis and the threats, uh, these kinds of things, it's pretty clear that uh, these figures re reflect a, a growing trend, at least in my mind. But perhaps this is the baseline we need to establish to move from here to see, to judge whether uh, we're uh, impacting anti-Muslim prejudice, whether it's going up or whether it's going down. Did you have, uh, that's fine. In terms of actual poll results, there's nothing you can point to to say that you might not have gotten these same numbers had you mm -hmm. done this two years ago, three years ago. Maybe yeah, before and, before yeah, I mean, we, we're, uh, we're using this as a baseline and uh, to, to see if it confirms what we see on a daily basis, which is, again, the rise in hostility, rise in anti-Muslim rhetoric. 
Uh, thank you all for coming. Last question. Uh, last, question. Last, question. last question. Sorry, I was late today. Uh, Sixty-seven percent neutral image. Isn't it in itself a positive sign? After all, there there has been a lot of efforts in this country also yes. to kind of minimize the. I think this whatever is, attitude could be after. We, we take comfort in. In, in this finding that uh, uh, most people are neutral, which means we can go and reach out to them and we can help shape the image of Islam. But also we ask them to take one step forward towards the Muslim community. This is the most probably positive finding that we had in the, in the, in the survey, that the, the majority of Americans are receptive, are open-minded, and we just have to work together. Uh, the negative media did not affect the minds. Uh, well, if we leave it this way, I think it will affect their minds. And that's why we have to intervene. And we're asking legislators, um, civic leaders, religious leaders, also to do their part. I, we take comfort in the number of people who have good attitude to, toward Muslims in this country, in spite of all the coverage, in spite of what's happening. That's good. Uh, that's why in CARE, we are launching programs to further reach to the American people. We're launching a program in Ramadan where we ask 100 mosques to open their doors to share iftar, which is dinner or breakfast for the fasting people, with their neighbors. And we're asking you know, to invite 1,000 people from their surrounding political leaders, religious leaders, civic leaders in their you know, neighborhood to invite them to share and to come to a mosque uh, in the night of Ramadan. We're going for that October 23rd as a campaign across the country. We want to continue this program. So every Ramadan we might have you know, this campaign. So we reach maybe 1,000 mosques that will there do it. We did the ad campaign, we did the petition. So we know what we have to do. But I think political leaders also have influence. When Bush, President Bush visited the mosque, it had an effect. But since you know, then, there was not much done into educating the American people, and the American people do listen to their political leaders, that these acts don't have anything to do with Islam. I mean, the General Boykin statements that uh, Bush, they never fired or never condemned the statements of General Boykin in the Pentagon. These things give us a reflection. The denial of um, Cat Stevens or Yusuf Islam coming to this country, they add to the misconception. They add to the problems. People Tariq believe, Ramadan. and Tariq Ramadan, the professor was a moderate professor from Europe coming to teach in this country. Now, when the American people see these statements, they feel that, well, if Cat Stevens is in the terrorist list, I wonder who my neighbors are. So that's, that's what we believe. These are also they're counterproductive. And we're asking the government, every time they take an action, to think what, what the consequences. And the consequences are very clear. The rise of hate crime against Muslims, it's tremendous, 70% last year. And we believe it will continue to increase if there is nothing done. We will do our part, but we're asking everybody else to do their part. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, everybody on the panel uh, is available for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Uh, Again, thank you.
They're going to have it up on the website. The House meets in about an hour and a half at 12.30 p.m. Eastern for morning hour speeches. Legislative work starts at 2. Today's bills include land and environmental issues and honoring Holocaust victims.